Welcome in to College Football Now, presented by Manscaped. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. On today's show, we will be talking about potential replacement candidates for Brian Harson. He has been fired by the Auburn Tigers as their head coach. He was hired about over a year and a half ago now, and the tenure for Brian Harson was short, but it felt like a very long time if you were an Auburn Tigers fan, as he was on the chopping block not too long ago, over the offseason. Auburn was trying to find any reason they could to get rid of Brian Harson after a bad outing on the recruiting trail this offseason. Auburn didn't get the results they were expecting. A six-win year last year, things didn't get off to the start that they wanted to this year, and they ultimately decided to move on. And What's interesting is the buyout situation. Auburn has to pay now $37 million between Harson and Gus Malzahn, their last two head coaches, to not coach at the University of Auburn anymore. That's two firings in, in the last two years. And it doesn't even count the assistants that were under contract. A lot of money that's being dished out of what Auburn has dealt with. And look, what we've seen over the the track record at Auburn. You can win at a high level. You can win national titles at Auburn. But it comes with the cost. They they nearly fire almost every coach that, that goes there. Doesn't matter how many games you win, championships you put together. In all likelihood, if you take that Auburn job, you're probably going to get canned at some point based on the way things go. In Brian Hartson's case, he wasn't there very long. He didn't win a whole lot of games. And he was out the door pretty fast. Last year, there was rumblings of some things that went on, potentially with him and a football staffer and rumors that were put out there to try to get the buyout talk going, to try to avoid uh, paying that buyout and get Brian Harson out of there for cause. Ultimately, it didn't go that way. And instead, Brian Harson is out now and this job is open again. So, your chance to weigh in. Should Auburn have fired... Brian Harson, what do you think about this move by Auburn to move on from their head coach? Was this one a little too early? Did he not have enough time to prove himself there? Your chance to weigh in. Let us know in the comments section. Type Y for yes, type in for no, if Auburn should have fired Brian Harson. So let's go over the hot board now for Auburn and the potential coaching candidates to take this job. And number one on our list is Matt Rule, the former head coach of the Carolina Panthers and previously spent time at Baylor and Temple. And Matt Rule's name is going to be atop almost every hot board uh, this offseason for a guy that was very successful at two programs at the college level. Didn't coach in the SEC, but has been there, done that. And you have to imagine that he's going to be back in college football here pretty soon. And when you talk about a guy like Matt Rule, I think one of the things that would be attractive for Auburn, although things did not go well at the NFL level, trying to recruit talent and show that, hey, you coach to the National Football League and some of the names that you coach there certainly should have an appeal. If you're Auburn and you're trying to compete with the likes of Alabama and LSU and Tennessee and Georgia, you have to stand out in some way, shape, or form. And in Matt Rule's case, you might be able to point to and say, hey, look, He's coached the National Football League. He knows what it takes to get there. And if Auburn is so hell-bent, if they're fr- so frustrated on how much Harson struggled in recruiting, Matt Rule might be your guy to turn things around on the recruiting trail and develop talent. We've seen him build two programs at the college level before. Number two on our list is Dave Aranda from Baylor. Now, Aranda is going to be very hard to pull away from that Baylor program. He seems to be very happy very pleased and signed a contract extension last year, but this year hasn't necessarily gone the way that Baylor had hoped in 2022. This was a team that had aspirations to make the college football playoff, to win the Big 12 Conference again, and it looks like that those dreams have died at this point. And so you wonder with Dave Aranda and Baylor, have the expectations, have they gone as far as they can go with that program? If that's the case, if Dave Aranda is looking to compete for titles and move elsewhere and try to get that bag, 
Has he reached the ceiling at Baylor? That's what I wonder with Dave Aranda, and I think a lot of people are very curious. He's done a very good job there, but have they reached their highest point that they could do? Who knows? But Dave Aranda, uh, a defensive-minded coach, has done a good job with that Baylor program. We'll see. And he's got SEC experience. was a longtime coordinator in the Southeastern Conference, won a national championship as the D.C. at LSU. Number three on our list is Mark Stoops from Kentucky. And Mark Stoops very well could be the best candidate on this list for this job. But he's got maybe the best job in America. And here's what I mean by that. Mark Stoops, the expectations at Kentucky are not very high. It's a basketball school, right? And he is the greatest coach in that program's history. He has lifetime security. They pay him well. They're excited to have him there. Kentucky's probably going to do whatever they can to keep him there. So if you're Mark Stoops, do you want to leave where you have the bag secured, the job security that you can ask for, although you won't be competing for national championships, to go to Auburn where the pressure is going to be extremely high and you come into a situation where you're not loved. You didn't build that program like you did at Kentucky. So for Mark Stoops, although he would be probably the best coach that Auburn could get, uh, potentially that he's the best option, I don't see Mark Stoops, him leaving Kentucky potentially for this job. Mark Stoops might finish his career at Kentucky when it's all said and done, but he would be a terrific hire if they can bring him in. We know about his brother Bob doing a great job at Oklahoma, the national championship he won there. The Stoops family is incredible when it comes to college football. Mark Stoops would be a hell of a hire if they could pull him in, but I think that's why we have him three on this list here is because the chances of bringing him, taking him away from Kentucky seem to be pretty low. What's the best job available? Is it this Auburn job? Is it Nebraska with all the success they had in the 90s? And trying to rebuild that thing, trying to get Nebraska to where they feel like they belong? Is it Wisconsin, who has been a consistent team in the Big Ten over the years, competing for Big Ten titles and Rose Bowls? What's the best of these three jobs? They all come with a certain amount of pressure, and they're all trying to take that next step to compete for championships. But there's still a gap to get there. What's the better job? If you could pick any of these three jobs, what would it be? I think Auburn's the best job in the country right now. I do. What say you? Let me know in the comment section. Type A for Auburn. Type N for Nebraska. Type W for Wisconsin. Today's show is presented by Manscaped. And, you know, today is Halloween. It's spooky season, folks. And I got to tell you, I do not want you to be spooked out by these deals that Manscaped is offering right now. You can save with the Platinum Package 52% right now, and it's only $123.99, and it comes with all your favorites from Manscaped, everything from the boxers to the shaving cream to the lawnmower 4.0. I mean, it's it's a great deal. All these great products from Manscaped, and you're going to save a lot of money right now. $123.99, 20% off, plus free shipping at manscaped.com slash chat. Tell them that Tyler Jones sent you. You'll be glad you did. Start saving now. Free shipping included. Manscaped.com slash chat. Number four on our list is a very familiar name to the Southeastern Conference, and that is Hugh Free, the head coach at Liberty and former head coach at Ole Miss. Ole Miss reached heights that they hadn't seen in a very long time, but it did come with some scrutiny as uh, there was some NCAA penalties that were handed down and a burner phone that involved a mistress, and you know the story. Hugh Free goes on to Liberty. He did just sign a contract extension, but he's got that Liberty program humming. And this, to me, you look at Auburn and their track record. I mean, you can point to Bruce Pearl in basketball. You can point to what Charles Barkley has had to say about buying recruits in the past at that Auburn program. I don't think Hugh Free would have any problems fitting in with Auburn. If it comes to playing a little dirty or trying to, you know, have some extra incentive, Hugh Free, I think, could fit right in at Auburn. Hugh Free seems like a natural fit, but do you want the baggage with it? 
I think Auburn just might be willing to take that chance if it means winning football games, and Hugh Free could do just that. Number five on our list is Matt Campbell of Iowa State. The Iowa State Cyclones have been really good under Matt Campbell, and he's done a great job to turn around that program in the last few years, and he's turned down a lot of jobs, turned down chances to be in the National Football League to stay at Iowa State over the years. But you look at Matt Campbell, and the last couple of years have not been as good as what they were a few years prior. Kind of like what we talked about with Dave Aranda. You wonder, is the clock ticking on Matt Rule to jump at a big-time opportunity? I wonder with that with Matt Campbell, if now's the time he makes a move. And no real ties to the SEC. He's a Big 12 Midwest guy. Don't necessarily know if he would fit in there in the SEC at Auburn, but we have seen before Auburn has hired a former Iowa State head coach previously. That was Gene Chizik, who was at Iowa State before he came over to Auburn and won a national championship. So something to think about there with Matt Campbell possibly there on the list. We have five more names to get to on our hot board for the University of Auburn. Before we do, though, Who do you think will be Auburn's next head coach? Let us know in the comments section, whether it's somebody we mentioned or somebody that we have not mentioned, who you think should be the next head coach of the Auburn Tigers. Let us know in the comments section below. Number six on our list is Deion Primetime Sanders himself. Deion Sanders has done an incredible job at Jackson State, turning that program into a powerhouse. They weren't really anything before he arrived at Jackson State. And his name is going to come up for jobs. But what you have to wonder is, this is his first time being a head coach. And going from Jackson State to a Power 5 job would be a significant jump. Now, we know that Deion can recruit. He was able to bring in some great talent and win on the recruiting trail this past year. But is he ready for the stage of the Southeastern Conference? That remains to be seen, but credit where credit's due to Deion Sanders for what he's done at Jackson State. Number seven is Todd Munkin, the offensive coordinator at Georgia. Previously spent some time in the NFL as an offensive coordinator and also was the OC at Oklahoma State. The number one thing you can say about Todd Munkin is that Todd Munkin does an incredible job of adapting to his personnel, to his strengths. When he was at Oklahoma State, they ran a up-and-down, run-and-gun offense, that air raid machine where they just scored as quickly as possible and they were dynamic, and he was probably the best OC that Mike Gundy ever had at Oklahoma State. Meanwhile, at Georgia, he adapts to his personnel where you have a guy like Stetson Bennett, who's not going to be an NFL quarterback by any means, but he gets the most possible out of Stetson Bennett in plays to his strengths. They're not running the offense he ran at Oklahoma State. They are running the football. You see them line up under center, something he never did at OSU either. Todd Munkin is very good at adapting to what he has. Don't know how he would be when it comes to, you know, coaching up a defense, finding up a defensive coordinator and all that, but Todd Munkin deserves a quality head coaching job. Can't imagine that he's one of the first names in Auburn's list, but he certainly deserves to be considered. Three more names to get to in just one moment. Before we do, we want you to subscribe to Chat Sports as we cover the latest news, rumors, coaching hot boards, and more right here on Chat Sports. Subscribe today. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment with the latest news in college football. It's all in one place right here on Chat Sports. We'll be covering the college football playoff rankings as they are released tomorrow as well. Subscribe now. You'll be glad you did. A few more names for you. Let's look at Dan Lanning now, the head coach at Oregon. Did a great job as the defensive coordinator at Georgia, winning a national title last year. Comes to Oregon this year, and they had a rough outing going up against his former team week one, losing to Georgia. But since then, Dan Lanning's done a great job, and Oregon has played some really good football over the last couple of weeks. And Bo Nix, who... A former Auburn quarterback, as you all may know, has not, you know, looked great over his career. And then he comes to Oregon, and now we're starting to see the Bo Nix that we saw when he arrived as a freshman at Auburn. And so credit for Dan Lanning for figuring something out with Bo Nix. And here's something to think about, too, okay? This might be going too far down the rabbit hole, but we'll bring it up anyway. 
there's still some COVID eligibility left when it comes to Bo Nix. Maybe he and Dan Lanning come together back to Auburn, potentially. Crazy idea, but there's been crazier things done before. A couple more names, Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. Lane's awesome. I really like Lane Kiffin. He's had a nice turnaround from when he was the head coach at SC. And, I mean, that Ole Miss program is just humming right now. He is probably the best coach that Ole Miss has ever had. Ever. I mean, he's done that great of a job. Don't know if he wants to make a move down the road within conference to Auburn, but he's a name to consider. And then lastly is Bill O'Brien, the OC at Alabama. And Bill O'Brien, former NFL head coach, not the sharpest knife in the drawer, we'll put it that way, but Bill O'Brien does know football. Uh, we've seen him you know, win at Penn State under some very unusual circumstances. And now... Uh, leading that Alabama offense. We've seen what Bryce Young and company have done. He's a name to consider, but going over to to Auburn from Alabama, people might step back and pause for a second about that potential move. I don't know if he wants to be enemies with Nick Saban there. So what say you? How would you rate the Auburn job as it stands? We compared it to some of the other jobs in the country. How would you rate it 1 through 10? Let me know in the comments section how you would rate this Auburn job uh, 1 through 10. And as always, you can follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Tyler Jones Live, talking college football all the time on those social media platforms, as well as the National Football League. And I'll see you next time, right here on College Football Now. Thanks for joining us.